I made this Halo environment using the Unreal 5 engine. Today you will learn the steps that I took to complete this project, and to keep things simple, I have blocked this video in the timestamps below. Don't worry, if you're not an experienced 3D artist, I will explain everything. What is a better place to start besides Master Chief? 3D characters have a lot of moving parts to them. You have the static mesh, the skeletal mesh, materials, UVs, and textures. All have to be juggled and prepared outside of the Unreal Engine inside a 3D software. I use Blender to do just that. So the first thing I did was accurately name all of my materials and objects. I made sure I didn't have any duplicate UV maps that may confuse Unreal where to map its textures. Sadly, there is one final painful step before we can export our characters. You see, Blender uses Python language to construct its node graph, while Unreal 5 uses a high level shading language. This means Unreal does not know what a color ramp is or any of the nodes from within Blender for that matter. So to transfer the materials, we have to bake our textures inside Blender. And for that, I use Simple Bake to achieve this. Because I wanted to have access to the Mixmo animation library, I used their AI to quickly rig my model. Then I downloaded a simple T-pose and imported that into Unreal. This simple skeleton would then be extremely painful to animate, so I created a control rig and began to create an FK control rig for my model from scratch. I am working on an in-depth tutorial for this, but for now I will gloss over the basics. For each bone, I am creating a control that will make it much easier to animate within the sequencer. The spinal cord will be a simple FK chain, while for the arms and legs, I created IK chains with pole vectors. These pole vectors allow me to move limbs much more intuitively. I did the same for the fingers where I created these simple sliders to give me full control. Now, because I want to layer on top of already existing animations, I need to create a backward solve. This will bake those animations onto the control rig, where within the sequencer, I can then layer on top of my own adjustments. Pretty cool. Blocking is a 3D sketch showing the poses and positions of elements and characters in a particular scene. It's a technique that allows you to adjust the size and proportions quickly and efficiently, without your device having to process too much information. I always do my blocking from the start and from the camera's viewport. Once I was happy with my blocking, I then began to replace those simple shapes with more complex models. For example, the mountains in the background were created within Gaia and imported into Unreal to be placed. Simple boulders and a mix of mega scans were then imported and placed into the level. This took a lot of experimenting, a lot of scaling and moving items back and forth until I was happy with the results. The Halo ring was fairly simple to create. I just created a simple plane, added a bunch of loop cuts, scaled the top and used a modifier to curve the model. From there I applied an earth texture and adjusted the tiling. And for the material I added a blue layer and an emissive node within Unreal to help create the illusion of an atmosphere. For the ship and platform I just modeled those using simple cubes. I then applied a boolean to create the thrusters. However, for this model, I wasn't really concerned with details as it was going to be placed back in the background of my scene. With the main composition complete, I then moved on to set dressing my level. Working from large objects to small, I focused on placing small rocks around boulders, fallen branches were placed around tree stumps, and lastly decals were used to help break apart repeating and boring textures. For my trees, I used high quality 3D models downloaded from Sketchfab. Those were then placed mainly in the foreground and big ground. For the background, I used these simple PNG planes, helping to save and polycount. Those were then painted across my landscape using the foliage painting tool. Just make sure to align your normals to stop those trees growing at weird angles. Lighting is hard, but it's extremely fun. This is the part I love the most and end up spending the most time on. For this project, I experimented with HDRIs and basic lighting setups. However, I finally end up using the Ultra Dynamics Guide just to keep everything under one blueprint. Within this blueprint, I adjusted the exposure settings within the post-processing volume. I set everything to one and adjusted the exposure on my scene within the local exposure using these settings. To light Master Chief and the items within my foreground, I used my very own lighting widget that I programmed. If you want, you can pick that up yourself on the marketplace. From here, I can just quickly add in lights and adjust any things like fog and post-processing volumes on the fly. It speeds things up and saves me a lot of time. I added in these simple cloud planes to help spice up my skybox. So to add movement, I place them all within an empty actor. Then I just keyframe that actor across the screen. Because of the control rig, 
animating Master Chief was pretty straightforward. I also just learned that if you hold the B key and click and drag your mouse across your screen, you can then scrub through your timeline. I found this by accident and was completely mind blown. I know, I know, I'm a simple man at heart. For rendering, I used the movie render queue, deleted everything, added in anti Ellison, an AXR file, game override, and a screen percentage console variable. For my anti Ellison, I set it to 16, and for my screen percentage, 150. This renders out your desired resolution and upscales the image and then compresses it back down. It's great for removing small artifacts in your render, I find. All that was left to do was grab a cup of tea, wait for my render at the export, then import that in DaVinci Resolve, adjust some colors, and export my final render. I think that's all. I hope this video was entertaining and informative. If you make something on this, be sure to send it to me on Discord. I love seeing what you guys create. Check out the Patreon on my course if you want to support the channel. For now, this is goodbye. Have a nice day, folks.